Okay, so we are in my gear room, so um, excuse the weird sounds that you occasionally hear. This is just one of my storage rooms. Uh, we are just starting the new year, and I know a lot of people like to try new things, and I wanted to start a series of videos on hiking and gear um, for people who want to get started, because when I started, I had no idea. So we're gonna start today with boots, um, hiking boots and socks. I do recommend for any gear, if you've never tried it before, if you don't know what you need, if you don't know what you like, and I have no financial ties to REI, but I do love them and I think REI is a great place to start because you can check things out, you can really um, try them out and then return them if they don't work for you. And um, boots specifically, it's very important that you get the right fit. I know it can be cheaper to go online um, and get a pair, but if they don't fit right, it's not gonna matter because you're gonna be miserable and then you're not gonna start. So even if you're going to buy them online for cheaper, I recommend you go somewhere like REI um, and try them on and help somebody get you a good fit so you can see the different brands and then you can check online for a cheaper price. Um, so I happen to use um, Vask brand. That's the brand that just works really well with my foot because I have a wide toe box. So um, we're gonna get into feet and boots and socks and the proper fit. So be prepared to see a lot of my feet from here on out. Okay, so hiking shoes. Um, I have my hiking boots. I like um, one that's taller and goes over the ankle because I have really weak ankles. So um, no matter the time of the year, this is the type that I tend to use. These are Vask brand. They do have um, Gore-Tex and um, they are pretty much water resistant. If I step in water and it doesn't go above these, I, I have no issue. If I fall into water and it's a quick in and out um, up to this area, I don't have much of a problem either with it getting wet. Of course, if I stand in the water for a long period of time or if it's above the ankle, it's gonna get into the shoe and it's gonna get me wet. Um, but I always carry an extra pair of socks just in case. Just for reference on um, shoes, my street shoes, if I was wearing heels or dress shoes to work, are a size nine, I do have big feet. Um, my running shoes are a size 10. My hiking shoes are a size 11. Um, so please note it's not uncommon uh, for them to be much larger. Your shoes should not hurt you. Um, I had a, the biggest problem with fit um, in walking downhill, it hurt my, my toes. So I'm gonna show you the fit of how they should go on in a minute, but first I also wanna talk about socks. These are three different types of socks. This is a liner sock. This one happens to be from REI. Um, they're often made out of silk. They're really thin. Um, one thing to note is uh, they often, when you're wearing them, you'll feel like you're, um, at first, they'll look like you're wearing them inside out, and that's because you'll notice if I turn them this way, the way you normally have socks with the seam on the outside, they're actually inside out. When they are on correctly, so the seam is on the outside of the sock. Um, and that is on purpose, that's so you don't get a blister. So the seam goes on the outside of your liner socks. Um, these are often worn to keep you from getting blisters. They also add a layer of warmth in the winter. I wear a pair of um, liner socks all year round. I did not used to, that's a new thing. I started getting blisters more this summer um, as the humidity went up and I hadn't done that previously. These are your standard hiking socks. These are smart wool socks. Again, you don't want cotton. Um, these are not inexpensive socks, um, but they last a really long time. Some of the different brands even have a lifetime warranty. You can actually register the socks. They're usually anywhere. You can get them on sale, about $12 a pair. They run anywhere from um, 12 to 20 dollars for a pair um mid-weight this is standardly what i will wear year round and then i have this very very thick sock um it's extremely thick and i only use this if it's, it's really really cold out um i sometimes won't wear a liner under it and often i take these backpacking for my wearing at night in the tent or in the sleeping bag if it's particularly cold so that's socks um now I'm gonna I'm gonna put on the liners um, and my mid weight because that's what I normally wear. Um, and when you go to try on your boots, you should have at the very least a pair of mid weight socks to try them on. Um, <clears throat> and also to note before you go hiking at any time, these are my feet that really need some work. You want to cut your toenails, and it may feel like you just cut them, but I actually cut my toenails um, or trim them before every hike. Um, 
or at least once a week at a minimum because they may look like they're short but just the smallest little piece sticking above your toe that you won't even notice um, if it gets caught like on a seam in your sock or if it gets caught in a place of your toe or if it's pushing funny it will cause um, a blister if not a blister it just is gonna hurt really bad and you don't want that so I'm gonna go ahead and put my socks on and then I'm gonna show you um, some good fit okay so here's my foot um, in this shoe and the big thing I want to show you is this if I push my foot all the way forward so my toes are all the way in the front of the shoe I can fit my fingers down all the way down behind and I still have a little bit of room um, you want to be able to fit your your finger all the way down in there at least a finger um, I'm not saying you want them so big that they're flopping around but you need room your feet are gonna swell they're gonna change and you you want to make sure that you have room there if I push my foot all the way back against the heel I have more than a thumbs thumbs length it's right at a thumb for me between this piece here and the top of my toe so not the front but this piece here to my toe I have a thumbs width um, so that's how I know that they're right when I go to lace them and I think this is important as well somebody taught me this and it's um, been really good for me if we can figure out how to hold the camera and actually tie it you need a different fit here than you often do around your ankle so I like mine particularly I put my foot right so that the heel is all the way back against the back um, not squished but back there I pulled this tight and then I tie it here um, with just a single look I'm doing this one-handed um, maybe it's time to invest in a tripod with just a single push here I'm gonna put you down for a minute and then I go ahead after I get that tied here then I lace up the rest of the way and what this does by tying this tight or tying down tight here is it allows me to tighten through here the way that feels comfortable on my foot and then tighten through here the way it feels comfortable on my foot without it having to be the same tightness if that makes sense um, and that that's something that's been really helpful to me okay so some really quick easy ways to know when you're hiking if your shoes are not right you shouldn't be sliding around in the shoe a whole lot. If you're sliding a little bit and you've got that extra gap that we've talked about but not too much gap, just make sure they're tied really well and try that tightening down at the toe, tie at the base for that extra leverage if you're wearing a taller shoe um, or one that covers your ankle. So you shouldn't be sliding around a whole lot. Um, that's gonna cause blisters, you don't want that. Um, also, and this is where I found out my first time I wore shoes for six months and they felt fine all the time except for when I was walking downhill or down mountain um, my toes would hurt and I would feel it in the front of my toe um, which is where I learned to make sure I trim my toenails all the time so I went into um, REI to get a better fitting and had asked them if I was tying the shoes wrong which is where I learned some of the other tricks on how to tie them and they said no it's just that my shoes were literally a size too small um, probably a size and a half actually so if you're feeling that on the front of your toes when you walk downhill your shoe is too small you may think that maybe it's too big and you're sliding down into it but it's most likely too small so um, make sure you have at least that thumb width when you push your shoe all the way back your foot all the way back in the shoe um, at the end of the day it's what feels good to you not everybody feels the same way about gear and about um, their socks. I prefer a pair of liners, a pair of mid-weights year-round. I didn't always feel that way um, and I like having that finger width gap but at the end of the day you need to learn what feels right on you and what feels good on your feet. Um, I'm really funny about get lots of ideas, get lots of opinions on people who do it a long time so you don't have to make some of the more common mistakes. There are some basics like wearing liner socks making sure your shoes fit well but as far as what shoes work for you whether it's the high tops the low tops um, what weight what brand um, what feels good on your foot and what keeps you coming back um, is what you should be using I um, always get Vasque Vasque size 11 in women's works really well for me I've got a wide toe box um, and I'm really happy with the brand so I no longer 
Um, I only go to REI if it was um, like in the case of the first ones I got the wrong size and they did return them and I got a new pair so unless um, there's some reason I I'll just find Vasque online at this size because I know a Vasque 11 is good for me um, I do recommend the seam sealing which is a very simple um, $1.99 you can get it from REI or anywhere else it comes with a little brush and you can um, seal the seams on your boots don't seal obviously over the venting um, but it keeps little threads from coming undone um, which has not been a major problem with these shoes um, but could be so that that is that make sure you trim your toenails um, I know people love their pedicures if you're gonna go on a long hike do not get a pedicure before you go on a long hike any little um, calluses or tough skin that you have you want it um, I actually don't get really bad calluses even with the long hikes that I do I don't have um, but I do have some areas where the skin is a little bit tougher on the outside of my toe on the bottom of my heel um, and you you want to keep those um, they prevent blisters among other things socks make sure they fit you want um, liners mid-weight at the, the very least make sure that they're not cotton um, smart wool is is a really good fabric a lot of people use silk for the liner socks um, and they're pretty easily available socks are one that you can usually buy online with a non uh, non issue um, but that's it that's it for boots and socks and feet so take care of your feet anybody will tell you that whether they're a hiker a backpacker or somebody who was once in the military your feet are very important you can't walk without them um, and if you get a blister part way through a hike or if you um, have weak ankles and you don't have something to it, it's miserable um, and we'll get into also gear to carry in your pack I mean there are things you can carry in case you do get a blister or you do have an issue so thanks keep coming back um, don't be afraid to get out there and try something new um, and if you have any comments or questions on gear, don't hesitate to ask. I want to see as many people out there as possible enjoying nature.